Yes. Thank you very much. I, I hope you can see my uh, slides. And this is uh, uh, the uh, new member induction for Asian IW members. And because we are planning to have every year one uh, induction meeting, at least one induction meeting for different regions, and this is for Asian members. Thank you for joining us. Um, this induction is not only about telling you, uh, share uh, information about how you can uh, engage with IWA and how you know IWA better, but also to let you know who is behind the scenes. And then when you have some questions to specific uh, uh, ideas or issues, you can reach the right people in IWA. Um, okay, um, to start with, I would like to uh, firstly introduce the uh, staff members in the region, uh, in the Asian region, uh, I'm the uh, regional director for the Asian and Oceanic region, I'm Hong Li. And we also have in Greater China, the, the manager, Ms. Dan Wang. And then in the South Asia, we have an Indian office. Uh, we have Dr. Charles J Joseph and uh, Jayan. So they are in Indian office. It's the managers uh, in the Indian office. We also have a contact in Sri Lanka, in Jiji. So, um, if you have questions, you can reach in the region to these people. The main idea about the International Water Association is, like you know, it's a membership association aiming at supplying a platform for the water professionals to each exchange ideas, to, uh, uh, um, to share leading edge technologies, the knowledge, and across regions, across sectors, and also uh, uh, connecting with other communities within the water sector. And in Asia, there are, uh, like you know, there are a lot of people in Asia and we also have specific challenges in Asia. So it's, it's very nice if you can share among each other and also with IWA, your ideas and challenges you are facing. Uh, a very general picture about IWA is that we have Till now we have over 70 years history already. And through these years, IWA has grown into the top water, sec water uh, professional organizations globally. And we are currently around 10,000 members. They are from universities, research institu institutes, engineering and consulting firms, utilities, and many more. And all these members, they organize themselves into 50 specialist groups like several of our uh, friends here mentioned that they want to join different specialist groups to, to contribute. And these specialist groups covering all areas of water related technology and management. And we also have four thematic programs. Those are basins of future, seas of future, water sanitation and services and uh, digital water and many other programs as well. And as you know, IWA also has publishing, IWA publishing. They publish 19 professional journals and including the top academic journal in water, water research. I think you all know water research. And currently IWA has three main offices, London as the headquarters, Nanjing, China as the global operation, and Chennai, India, we also have a regional office, very active uh, regional office. And uh, I would like to now introduce my colleague, Barbara, to give a, an introduction about uh, the membership um, to you. Barbara, please. Barbara okay. is the membership uh, development manager and uh, she sits in London office. Perfect. Thank you, Hong. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. So one of IWA's strategic goal is to have a more engaged, diverse, and well-balanced membership base. And from this, from this slide, you'll see our numbers. So. Currently, we have over 7,600 active members. Now, IWA membership comprises of 
three different types of member. IAA subscription com comprises of three different types of membership. This includes corporate membership, university membership, active mem um, individual membership. So that individual membership includes professionals, students, and retired members. Now, so you can see from all of this collectively, there's over 7,600 members globally. To break this down, we have 320 corporate members and 62 university members. In addition to that, we have 53 governing members. Now the governing members are organization that represents the water profession in their country. And their mission is to leverage the IWA in their region. In addition to that, we also have 19,000 plus network members. Now these members are not subscribed members, but they are active on our connect platform, giving ideas about um, issues within the water sector. Within the numbers that I've just highlighted, just to break it down a bit, we have China representing 18% of the membership with currently 1,372 members. India follows with 580 members, which is 7.6%. Which is then we have Japan with 340 members. Malaysia, we have 114. Sri Lanka, 95, and the Philippines, 92. And I would say the recently concluded Digital Water Congress helps to put our numbers up. So this year we've managed to reach more members. Using the digital platform, we were able to reach more members and that has helped to increase our membership base in the region. Next slide, please. Okay, so at the beginning, I mentioned that we are intentional in having a more diverse network. From this slide, you will see where we are located. Western Europe, as always, has the, the most of our membership base. China and East Asia is following steadily. However, um, we are now seeing growth in the likes of Latin America, Middle East, and Africa. And I think this will continue to grow with the strategic plans that we have in place. Next slide, please. So, where are we located? Now, this slide represents where our office is located as well as where our members are. So there is, okay. So we have starting with our head office here in London. So we, we have Lon the head office here as well as the IWA Publishing. Now IWA Publishing is the home for all the journals that get produced by IWA, including the water research that, um, well, the water research that Hong mentioned earlier. We also have the IWA global operation in China, Ninjing, China, and then we have the IWA regional office in India. Now the orange, sorry, the green stroke yellow dots represent our individual members globally. Now, the individual members, as I mentioned earlier, comprises of student members, retired professionals, and professionals in the water sector, aspiring to be in the water sector, and those who have an interest are not yet in the water sector. The black locator point represents our corporate members, and the red represents our academics, universities and academic members. Lastly, the Teal color is an indication where our governing members sit. And as I mentioned earlier, governing members are organization that represents the water professionals in their country. Next slide, please. Okay. So it is safe to say that um, we can segment our membership benefits in two areas. So 
we have the publishing aspects of our membership benefits, as well as we have the networking and professional development. So if we start with the, net, the networking and professional development. So your membership allows you to enjoy special rates to our events, IW events. Um, so generally at events, we explore frontiers of science and technology with pragmatic innovative solutions. So this gives you an opportunity to network with persons within the, within the water industry. It also gives you, the membership also gives you full access to IW Connect, including participation in different specialist groups. Moving on, in addition to that, you also have the opportunity to participate in membership committee of the specialist group. So you're able to grow within the, grow within the specialist groups. You have the option to participate in online dialogues and there is also an opportunity to access IWA Learn, IWA, access webinars through the IWA Learn platform. We have what we call a source magazine that is delivered to our members quarterly. Now, though you are, as a member, you're able to submit any articles of interest to our marketing and communication team. And if it is relevant to the publication at the time, then you can get that published in the magazine. Now, our membership sectors. So we are divided, we are in every aspect of water. Um, on the screen, you will see a breakdown as to where our membership mainly lies. The bulk of it is within the academics. And then we have, we're trying at the moment to increase the membership in utilities. It is actually in the second place in terms of where most of our members lie. But overall, from the screen, you will see where we are in terms of membership. Now, in terms of any questions, I will put the IWA membership email address in so that you can contact us at any time. I'll now introduce you to my colleague, Daniela, who will give us some details about membership engagement journey. Daniela? Yeah. Uh, just to let you know, Daniela is our Director of Strategic Programs and Engagement in IWA. Uh, so she will give you introduction how you can engage in IWA. And Daniela, please share your screen. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Hong. Um, just checking if you can. Yeah, well, my screen. yeah, okay, oh, cool. yes, you can. Okay, great. Uh, so, well, I have, <laughs> have a problem. The screen is here, I have a second screen here. I'm, I'll make the presentation looking at here because if not, I cannot see the slides. <laughs> Sorry, I'm presenting from uh, not from PowerPoint, from my PowerPoint, from the from our um, uh, match. I'm sorry for that. So I'm gonna be looking here. Uh, anyway, um, my name is Daniela uh, and I'm gonna be talking about how you can engage in IWA activities once you become a member. Uh, so we have uh, some steps that usually our members go. Uh, of course, if you join uh, our network when you are a very um, experienced professional, this may, might be slightly different, but usually our uh, new members uh, start by uh, accessing our publications, uh, establishing partnerships, participating in our activities, in our um, specialist groups, uh, in our webinars, in our events, um, and also uh, doing uh, online reading. Then uh, in a second stage, when you are already familiar with all uh, IWA resources, with all opportunities that are um, uh, provided to you. So you can engage in events as a presenter, as a chair of a session, uh, uh, reviewing conference papers. You can uh, become a member of our communities. You can share content in our IWA Connect um, net, net, um, social media, let's say it's kind of a water Facebook. I don't remember who, who labeled it as a water 
water Facebook. Uh, and you can uh, join our uh, many communities, specialist groups, regulators, young water professionals. Uh, I'm going to be talking about this a little later. Uh, once uh, you become more familiar with all these opportunities and you engage in all uh, these uh, communities, then you can start to contribute to propose new outputs uh, in those communities. You can write content, book chapters, blogs, position papers, white papers. You can contribute to organize AWA, AWA events. You can propose workshops, uh, webinars, courses, uh, and uh, you can actively participate in peer-to-peer -peer leadership exchange um, in our programs and communities. Uh, Further, when you are a really experienced um, IWA member, very active, you can become an influencer, you can uh, be distinguished with uh, the IWA Fellowship. We, I'm also going to talk about this a little later. Uh, you can uh, become a manager, a manager of one of our communities, uh, for instance, our specialist groups. You can be, become a member of uh, one of our uh, stream committees, for instance, the Emerging Com uh, Water Leaders Committee, if you are under 35. You can represent Ida Boy nationally, and uh, you can also join uh, Ida Boy's Congress program committees to shape uh, the content and the format of our conference, our forums, and our events in general. Uh, you can also finally join Ida Boy Strategic Council and uh, support and engage uh, setting Ida Boy main, agen main agendas. So uh, our communities, uh, I would say that our uh, one of, or maybe our most active and uh, larger and most active communities are our specialist groups. So uh, the idea of the specialist groups is to connect water leaders uh, to bridge the gap between science and practice. Um, so those groups, they connect people that have the same interest that, that are working in the same topics, right? So uh, the main activities that they organize, they are self-managed. Uh, we are Ida Boy uh, Secretariat, we support them, but they are self-managed. They have a management committee uh, that defines uh, their activities, but usually their activities are conference and, and workshops. Uh, they um, release books, journals, and reports. Uh, they have online discussions uh, and they collaborate, they partner with each other uh, online. Either way, Connect uh, is used to that. Uh, if they decide there is something really important that they want to study further, uh, maybe it's a topic that is, uh, is a trend at the moment, uh, then he, they can develop test groups. If it's something that should be uh, studied in a longer um, term, they can develop working groups. They usually do, um, provide webinars and training activities uh, about this particular topic that they are um, focused on. Uh, and they also pu publish uh, newsletters. Uh, we have 50 uh, specialist groups currently. Here you have uh, some of them. You can find um, all the list of all of those spe specialist groups in our um, website. So how are the opportunities to engage with uh, these uh, specialist groups? Uh, as I mentioned, you can contribute to task groups and working groups on specific tasks or subtopics of the main uh, subject that is uh, the focus of the SG. You can contribute to their publications. You can uh, participate and also initiate discussions in this uh, IWA Connect uh, pages. You can organize, uh, attend, and present in their conferences. They all have at least one specialized conference. Uh, and you can propose new initiatives and ideas. Uh, you can also uh, nominate, be nominated to the management committee. So in this case, you can contribute in a leadership role uh, to the management of the group and to the organization of the group activities. Uh, who you should contact if you uh, are interested in joining one of these special groups or more than one, because if you want, of course, usually nobody does that, but if you want, you can engage in the 50 ones, right? Uh, but usually people uh, engage in a few ones that are related to, to their work. So you can contact Rashna. I think she already uh, presented herself here, right, Rashna? 
and uh, you can learn more about that in our um, uh, website uh, if you go to communities and either way specialist groups. Some other either way communities, we have our governing members, we have our young water professionals and we have our fellows. I'm gonna discuss a little further each one of the, these uh, communities. Well, uh, the governing members, we have currently 53 governing members uh, all around the world. They are usually organizations that represent the water professionals in their countries. And their mission is to leverage the boy at the national level. Uh, as I mentioned, they are usually organizations, uh, for instance, local national water organizations. But sometimes if the country does not have a uh, a strong organization or any organization, then sometimes a group of professionals from different backgrounds, from different institutions, uh, they present uh, themselves together to become the governing member. This is not the most uh, usual um, format that, uh, that we have, but it's also possible. So uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, currently 53 governing members, the new ones uh, from Asia uh, are from Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. And we are discussing uh, new potential governing members in Thailand, uh, in the Caribbean, Mongolia, Ethiopia, Vietnam, and Argentina. Uh, today, they, those governing members, they um, get together annually in a governing assembly to uh, discuss, um, to, uh, to elect either way board and to discuss the main agendas to be addressed by the association. And uh, by coincidence, they are, they are um, getting together today and later on in their governing assembly. So who to contact if you, uh, as an institution, are interested in becoming an either boy governing member, you can contact our colleague, Caroline uh, Cabasas. This is her email. And you can also learn more in our website. Either boy uh, young water professionals community. Uh, this is a really important community. Uh, if you are under 35 years old and you join Ida Boy as a member, you are automatically considered an Ida Boy uh, Young Water Professionals member. So uh, this community acts uh, in three um, areas, in three pillars. One is engagement and exposure. It's a very important uh, way to networking if you are a Young Water Professional. So you can join uh, the Emerging Water Leader uh, Committee. It's a uh, less than 15 people steering committee that uh, leads uh, the activities of this community. You can organize or support organizing events. Uh, you can lead uh, an yeah, either boy young water professional chapter in your own country. Uh, you can be a rapporteur for either boy congresses in our last um, Digital Congress, uh, our first and uh, Digital Congress last May. Um, all our co-chairs and all sessions were young water professionals and they were the responsibles for summarizing, wrapping up uh, sessions. Uh, you can participate in other way strategic council, council and you can get inducted to some of the specialist groups that may interest you. Uh, for professional development, you can uh, organize the conferences, you can facilitate and participate in the Emerging Water Leaders Forum, which is the main um, event of this community. You can uh, use our online resources, you can uh, dialogue with our seniors professionals from our network and learning from uh, their experience. And uh, you can network with uh, our uh, over 30 country chapters that already exist. Uh, we also have leadership development uh, activities uh, for those um, professionals that are in um, beginning their career, their journal, uh, journey in the water sector. So in the water sector, so you can get introduced to the leadership program. You can get mentored by uh, sector world leaders. You can uh, develop your competences in trainings and uh, you can also enroll, for instance, in professional uh, visits. As I mentioned before, the main event that is organized by this community is the Emerging Water Leaders Forum. Uh, usually it happens with our uh, World Water uh, Congress, uh, but 
because of all this uh, COVID situation. It didn't happen last year. So we are having it virtually this year in, I think, less than two weeks uh, from November 9 to November 11. Uh, it's going to be three days of uh, discussions. Uh, we are um, very confident that it's going to be a very uh, interesting and um, uh, a good opportunity for networking for you. So if you want to have uh, more information about that, you can contact our colleague. I think she also presented herself. Uh, and I'm not saying her name because it's too difficult for me. So it's Kasia. Uh, here you have uh, her email. Uh, and you can also um, go to uh, our website to get uh, more online information. If you have some particular uh, inquiries about uh, uh, the forum itself, you can write to the general I'm email uh, address iwayanguaterprofessionals.iwayhq.org. Uh, 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 I mentioned before our chapters. So uh, a couple of members, IWA uh, members uh, that are young, under 35 years old from uh, one particular country, they can get together and they can become a young water professionals chapter in these countries. So uh, we ha already have the China uh, Young Water Professionals uh, chapter, the Japan and the Philippines uh, Young Water Professional chapters. Those are uh, branded chapters, okay? We can have also non-branded chapters when uh, they are in the, let's say in the process to become a branded chapter, uh, but they still didn't uh, meet our requirements. So they can already act as a chapter. They just cannot use our uh, logo, right? Uh, but it, this is kind of um, first step to become a branded chapter. And currently we are discussing uh, to have uh, some, to forming uh, some um, branded chapters in Iran, uh, in India, and in some other uh, countries in Asia. To contact also Kasia in this case, to, if you are interested in form um, another book chapter. The fellows community. Uh, the fellows are uh, professionals, usually uh, experienced, but not only. Sometimes we're not, uh, some, some of our fellows are younger. Uh, so they are recognized for their long-term outstanding contributions to the global water sector and also to, for supporting IWA's mission and objectives. Okay, so it's important both to be, uh, it's a recognition for both the work as a water professional in general, but also for the work within IWA. So we have now uh, 209 fellows and we have 46 distinguished fellows. So those are even more experienced people and they are recognized for these uh, achievements and their contribution to uh, IWA mission. You can also engage in our strategic programs. Uh, we are currently uh, working with um, different strategic programs. We have the Waterwise Cities program. Ida Boy launched a few years ago, I think it was 2018. We launched the um, Waterwise Cities Principles. So it's um, a vision of how to become a uh, a city that manage their water, its water resources in a more wiser, in a more wise way. And um, you can endorse those principles if you go to our website. Uh, many cities uh, and utilities have already endorsed it, including also individual practitioners. Okay. We have our Nature for Water uh, project initiative. It's uh, discussing nature-based solutions, the use of nature-based solutions to water supply and to stormwater management and also to wastewater management. We have our climate smart utilities. This is really important now. We are gonna presenting going to be presenting our Climate Smart Utilities Initiative uh, at COP26 uh, next week. Um, this is 
aimed at uh, supporting utilities in their journey uh, into becoming uh, climate resilient. So we have two components in this climate smart utilities initiative, uh, the adaptation and the mitigation component. Uh, and we have, uh, we built this initiative on four pillars, a community of practice uh, to discuss um, experiences and share knowledge on both uh, mitigation and adaptation. We have uh, a vision uh, that we can also endorse more or less as the uh, Waterwise Cities principles. We have this uh, web presence, um, our website where we share resources and where you can go there and um, learn more about, um, about the topic. And uh, we are also uh, programming a recognition program to uh, award uh, utilities that are actually successfully engaging in this journey towards being water resilient, climate resilient. Uh, we have our water policy and regulation agenda. We have a very active um, regulators group uh, within AAA. So this group also has a biannual forum, uh, the regulators forum. The last one was uh, in June this year, and we're gonna have the next one in Copenhagen in 2022. Uh, within this program, we had this uh, CWIS citywide inclusive sanitation project uh, that we run from May 20. 20 to June 2021. Uh, the main um, output of this project was a call to action on regulating for citywide inclusive sanitation. And uh, this uh, project will be continuing next year. Uh, we have also the digital water program. It's a program that cross, cross cut uh, almost all other programs because it's a, a very hot topic to be discussed. It's uh, aiming at uh, supporting uh, utilities in their transitioning to become uh, digital. This is a very active program uh, with white papers, uh, with webinars. Uh, if you wanna know, know a little more about that, you can uh, look at our, in our apps website. You're gonna find a lot of information about that. And finally, we have the Innovators Platform, uh, which is a platform that is being developed uh, to support us in our task to bridge the gap between science and practice. What are the opportunities that you can uh, you have to enjoy uh, these uh, leadership areas? You can join the discussions on our Ida Boy Connect uh, network. Uh, we have the groups of all these initiatives. You can contribute and lead in working groups uh, in some of these initiatives, in regional dialogues. Uh, you can write case studies, for instance. You can participate, uh, collaborate, and even lead regional and international forums, webinars, trainings. You can uh, become, as an institution, you can become a partner uh, in these programs. You can uh, um, provide resources so we can uh, make those resources available through our um, uh, platforms. You can uh, generate uh, content, uh, guidelines, reports, uh, white papers, as I mentioned before, in the general, uh, digital water, we have a series of white paper, papers that is being um, released. Uh, and so doing all this, you can act as a catalyst for innovation, uh, knowledge sharing, and best practice. Who you can contact, you can contact me. Uh, this is my email, daniela.benfica at iwahq.org or our uh, manager of strategic programs, uh, Dr. Samuela Guida. She, I think she introduced herself in the chat already. Iwah Publishing. Um, uh, we have uh, a branch of a uh, bunch of other way, which is uh, other way publishing. Uh, as Hong mentioned before, we uh, publish uh, journals, uh, including the most important journal in the water uh, sector, which is uh, a number one in Scopus and um, Web of Science uh, ranking. This is water res uh, research, but we have also other journals that are more focused in one particular area of the water sector. sector. We uh, publish books uh, from usually 25 to 30 books uh, annually. 
and uh, what are the opportunities to engage with IWA Publishing. You can submit articles, you can become a reviewer and uh, in the future an editor, and you can also become uh, propose a book on a very specific topic. So you have here uh, the contacts uh, that you can reach out to if you wanna know more about uh, the opportunities within IWA Publishing. Uh, I think Barbara mentioned before, we have also the source. The source is a magazine. Uh, it's pro, uh, published not by Adobe Publishing, but by Adobe Secretaria. So uh, it's very uh, focused on um, global trends in the water sector. So we publish opinion articles, we publish new item, news items, we have articles, uh, and we also have online uh, articles that are published. Uh, you can contribute with this uh, magazine uh, with news to be published, with case studies to be presented, with opinion pieces. Uh, and if you want to know more about that, as, as a member, you receive uh, the source, so you are able to read uh, the magazine. But if you want to publish something, you can contact Keith Hayward. Uh, he's our um, comms and marketing director, but he's also the editor of uh, the source. So he's... Uh, you, here you can find his email address. Now, uh, my colleague, our colleague, Sealand, is going to present, uh, talk a little bit about Ida Boy events. Do you want to share your screen, Sealand? Yeah, yes, we will share okay. screen from here. So, but before uh, Sealand's oh. presentation, I'm just wondering if uh, you have questions or discussion points you want to share already. Um, I would like to have a couple of people uh, saying a few words with the participants just in between a break uh, for the presentations because too many presentations, I guess you will lose the concentration. Too much, too much content in a, yes. in a short period of time. <laughs> yeah, anyone has questions, comments, suggestions? Raise your hands or type in the chat. Of Hong Kai, there was Hong Kai. Um, there was a question about uh, how to engage with the digital water program. Um, yes, I put please. some information in the chat um, and the links so how to join. So um, just so you all know, you can um, join the IWA Connect group. Uh, but there are several ways to interact with the program. You can write blogs, you can write articles, um, you can produce video. Uh, we also recently um, launched the um, a podcast series. So you can also um, propose a podcast, a webinar, or um, as Daniela was saying, um, a white paper. So all this information is in the chat and in our um, website. So, also but if you project, have any questions. Samuela, also the project of the month, I think it's important. Yeah, so um, recently we um, launched this uh, in, in initiative where we um, promote uh, one digital project per month. Um, so if you are involved or you know about uh, um, a project that is uh, uh, promoting digital transformation, um, just let me know. And that this is uh, a possibility to um, show it as digital project of the month of, uh, on, on IWA Connect, but also on uh, the, our um, newsletter. So yeah, uh, we, uh, I put all the information in the chat, but if you have any questions, um, write it down or send me an email. Thank you. Super. Thank you, Samiela. Uh, anyone has any comments on the ones already presented? Suggestions, questions? No? All clear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now I will share screen for Sealand to, to present. Mm -hmm. But while I'm sharing screen, if you change your mind, you want to share something, feel free to do so. Yes, Sealand okay. uh, is here. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, 
This is Sealand. I am the uh, Global Events Officer here at IWA, uh, based in the Nanjing office. And I'm here today just to give you an overview of um, the IWA events. So uh, one of the main ways which IWA facilitates the exchanges of knowledge, best practices, experiences, and leadership is through uh, many of our IWA events. So at IWA, we host about 40 events per year, which means that's close to one every week. Um, and most of them are organized by our members in the form of specialist group conferences or the Young Water Professional Conferences, as Daniela mentioned previously. And other uh, events supported by IWA are our strategic partnership events, such as the um, Amsterdam and Singapore Water Week or any other international events that would want our support. Yeah. Um, our flagship biennial conferences are the um, IWA World Water Congress uh, that happens every even year and the Water and Development Congress that happen every odd year. These events are hosted by the IWA Secretariat in-house, um, which you can see on the map that we have um, many World Water Congress throughout the past years and recently the Water and Development Congresses. And we host them in uh, different cities and countries almost every year. So it's a really great opportunity for all of the um, uh, water sector professionals and our members to engage. Uh, another area for um, our strategic partnership event that's also held in-house is the Leading Edge Technology Conferences, the LET, and the International Young Water Professionals Conferences. Um, at IWA, we provide full support for specialist group conferences. Um, here's just the list of our upcoming IWA supported conferences in the Asia and Pacific region. Uh, once uh, we receive the proposals from specialist groups, IWA, we will provide the full support in uh, providing publicity, uh, event guidelines and trainings for organizers all across the specialist group uh, conferences, as well as the young water professional conferences. So you can see that we have a few um, upcoming in the next year and also the year after. Uh, overall, so if you're looking to engage in an IW event, you can attend an event, uh, propose papers or workshops to an event, volunteer to chair <laughs> sessions, uh, partner to an event, uh, volunteer to be a part of the organizing or program committee or simply propose an event. Um, there are plenty of opportunities here with IW events. So I really encourage you to be involved and get engaged. Um, more information um, about IW events and how to organize or propose an event is available on the website here, uh, on our website and also the um, uh, IWA events director is Kazito and his email address is listed there. And lastly, with the um, IWA awards, I would like to introduce you is um, that at IWA, we present awards and we're committed to encourage and recognize the special contributions and achievements of our members and the water sector professionals. These awards are um, acknowledged and presented at all um, of our flagship biennial conferences mentioned before. Nominees will be judged by a panel of judges who are experts in the area. So here's just the list of our um, iconic key awards that we present um, to appreciate and also to encourage our IWA members. And I think that will be all from my end. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Siland. Um, this is just want to show you that all your like leading edge knowledge, technologies, innovations, 
best practices, the specific solutions from your region, you can share through our communication channels like the website, IWA Network, the website, the Source Magazine, the uh, IWA Publishing Online, and then this Connect, and also some of social media. Like in China, we have WeChat, uh, social media. You can share all those uh, with the wider and uh, global audiences and e exchange with them. And, um, and this is very much, again, I want to show that in Asia, we have a lot of uh, water challenges because we, we are most populated and also a lot of developing countries, uh, the economy in, in emerging economies in the region, uh, we have specific challenges as well in the region. So I would really very much looking forward to collaborate with all of you to help contribute to the improvements of water services in this region. And with that, I want to introduce two special guest speakers to our uh, induction meeting. And the first one is um, Nohayati uh, Abdullah. She is uh, very, very active in IWA and she used to be the board member for IWA. Currently, she is the associate director for UTM International in Kuala Lumpur and associate professor in UTM. And uh, she's also council member for the Malaysia Water Association, which is also a governing member in Malaysia. And she is US ASEAN Fulbright Visiting Scholar. She uh, has been awarded by uh, IWA as IWA Fellow. And she is also awarded L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science Awardee. And she's also International Fellow for, fellow for Japan Society on Water Environment. And I will also introduce the second one so that uh, I don't need to switch back my presentation. Our second guest speaker, Mr. Yang Weila, uh, he's also very, very active in IWA and very passionate young water professional in our network. Uh, he's currently the head of Philippines in IO Utilities, Asian Pacific region. He's co-founder for the Philippine Young Water Professionals uh, chapter. Uh, he's also currently management committee member for the IWA specialist group for intermittent water supply. And he has been awarded as the finalist for 2020 Young, Young Leader Leadership Award uh, for IWA. And he's also awarded uh, Mike Ruth Chen Fellow in 2019 Bears Environmental Leadership Program, UC Berkeley. So first I would like to give the floor to Yati. We call her Yati, <laughs> it's easier and then and um, Yati, please, I will stop share. Please share your screen. Hi, Hong. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi, Yati. Hi. I will try and share my screen now. Mm. Okay, so I hope you can see it. Yes. Yes. And then, um, so, Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon, a very good morning, good evening, everybody. So I believe we are in Asia, but we have some colleagues also from the London office. So thank you, Hong, for this uh, opportunity for me to quickly share my experiences with the International Water Association. So I put it as this title, Build It Before You Need It, uh, by which I mean is the professional networking and also uh, the long lasting friendship uh, between me and the IWE family. So this is uh, the secrets to success, I would call it. As you can see here, these are my circle of trust. And then I think since my student days as a PhD student, no, actually as an undergraduate student at, at UT, UTM, University of Technology, Malaysia, I have been introduced to International Water Association by my supervisor during that time. So if you can see these pictures, it's um, filled up with everybody from uh, the IWA specialist group who is, uh, who, who is also my PhD co-supervisor, Professor Tom from Newcastle. And then you can see here um, the former officers of uh, IWA, 
you can see Tauli, Ganesh, uh, his wife, Basu, and then Natalie, um, uh, Gustav Olsen, and then uh, Professor Furumai, and then um, Helmut Kreuz the entire board of directors when we had our board meeting in Spain. Uh, of course, again, when I organized the Young Water Professional Publication Workshop in Johannesburg. Uh, this is the beginning of my involvement as the chair of Young Water Professional Global Steering Committee for IWA back in 2014. So the left photo is showing when I was being interviewed uh, as the new chair of YWP, and then the right photo, my photo during the IWA Development Congress and Exhibition in Nairobi, in Kenya. So uh, being with IWA, I took it as part of my co-curricular activities, especially during my PhD tenure for the past uh, three years, uh, between 2009 until 2012. Uh, I really love this quote and I think I would share with you that water has a memory and carries within it our thoughts and prayers. As you yourself are water, no matter where you are, your prayers will be carried to the rest of the world. And that is what has happened to me with my IWA family during those years of involvement as the young water professionals. And then now uh, also serving the IWA as one of the fellows. So this is my journey, just to share with you briefly. Back in 2002, I was IWA student. Uh, I, I, I held the IWA student membership, which was paid by my PhD supervisor. And then uh, from 2009 until 2012, um, I commenced PhD and continued on um, as IWA student member. Uh, from 2010 until 2014, I was involved um, as one of the steering committee representing Malaysia um, <clears throat> and received the Young Water Professional Award in 2012. I was elected as chair uh, for the Global Steering Committee in 2014 until 2016. And then in 2017, uh, I was chairing the scientific committee when we organized the IWA Aspire conference and exhibition in Kuala Lumpur under the auspices of IWA via collaboration with the Malaysian Water Association. And then uh, from 2018 until 2022, uh, which is about next year, uh, I am uh, currently uh, one of the IWA fellows. So basically it all started with a single reply to an email looking for volunteers to become part of the Young Water Professional Committee members back in 2000, 2010. So basically uh, during my PhD years, I was really looking for um, a platform for me to learn as to how might I develop my professional network. So what you seek is really seeking you. Um, you are in the very right place uh, today, uh, having this induction meeting. And uh, this is uh, the opportunity for you to really build your professional networking through a global oh, yeah. as famous as IWA. Um, from my involvement, I have been experiencing a lot of things and then um, the traveling was really immense and then uh, I truly enjoyed all of the adventures that I have had with the IWA and as well as um, other things that follows uh, throughout the years since my involvement with the IWA. So as you can see here, a lot of congresses are being conducted at uh, various cities, the development congresses are being held also at various cities so you get the opportunity to not only be involved and be volunteers in conferences as mentioned by Daniela just now uh, but this is the moment when you actually get to immerse yourself in different uh, cultural um, and experiences and also to embrace the diversities that IWA had to offer in each of the different cities that you are visiting for the Congress. Right. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, my first meeting back in 2011. Uh, that time, uh, Professor Helmut Kreuz was the president of IWA. And then, uh, as I mentioned, 
really it was a, a simple reply uh, to the email looking for volunteers for the young water professional. So that is that was how it all began with my involvement uh, with IWA. And then I would like to truly highly recommend and encourage everyone, new members in Asia to really take this opportunity to build your professional network before you need it. Because this is uh, the platform where I met uh, water and wastewater experts um, to whom they have helped me a lot with my PhD journey, PhD studies. And then when I started my full-time job as a associate professor at university, we wrote papers together, we organized events together, and then um, we co-supervise our postgraduate students together. And then we learn about mentoring and then I have had them as my mentors for so, so, so many years. And then later we become friends and then I get the opportunity to, to come to Malaysia and vice versa. For example, here, our former president, Professor Glenn Dager, he hosted my uh, US ASEAN Fulbright Visiting Scholar Scheme at the University of Michigan for four months between December 2016 until March 2017. So I first met Glenn back in 2010 uh, at the Young Water Professional Conference in Sydney. And then since then, uh, he has become one of my mentor uh, in IWA and has been my host at his university back in 2016 to 2017. So the long-term relationship, uh, the long-term mentoring that IWA may provide is something that you, you don't want to miss when getting involved in an association like IWA. Uh, of course, uh, I had the opportunity to work with Yan, uh, the past president of IWA, and all of the women supporters of water subsectors. You can see Hong there as well. Uh, this is when we had our meeting, I think, in Tokyo during the World Water Congress uh, three years ago. So I love being part of an association. IWA is I think uh, the only platform that I have been a member for so, so long since back in 2002 up until today. So I have been a pretty much loyal member of IWA and I really uh, make it an opportunity for me to really learn and build my professional networking as well as long lasting friendship with everyone uh, within the IWA network and family. So this is just additional uh, what is it that I found um, throughout my involvement with IWA by using those skills to, to transform uh, networking into blossoming friendship between myself and all of my young water professional colleagues worldwide, and then how might we do it best uh, while at the same time learning from the IWA. And then the why should we build network? Because it is a critical part of our professional and personal growth. And then um, being with IWA uh, gets you to meet people and build relationship with them, uh, which then open up opportunities for jobs, for fellowships, uh, gaining information, career enrichment. And then you get special invitations sometimes to their um, exclusive events like today, for example. And then uh, if you are an academics, you get the opportunity to get to know all of the experts uh, that can be invited as an adjunct professor to your university and etc. Okay, or simply to have coffee and learn from the meaningful experiences. And then, of course, IWA encourages um, uh, your visibility on a social media platform. And then um, please do follow IWA Connect your Facebook page and everything linked in um, to, to, to keep connect, uh, to keep your connection alive with the IWA members uh, worldwide. And as I mentioned, I, I truly appreciate my experiences meeting um, all of the awesome mentors within the IWA um, uh, specialist groups, for example, and then the IWA fellows, they help me to build my relationship and then I receive mentoring and coaching from them to improve a lot of skills, help me to publish my papers uh, as to how best I can lead a project, uh, if there's any opportunity for research grants and then industrial collaborations and of course to volunteer at IWA conferences. 
So these are the things that I did. Uh, love is the water of life, says Rumi. And then obviously number one is for us to join an NGO. The only thing we need is to pay the fees. And then um, it is up to us as to how might we use the platform for us to build the network and to really get the fullest benefit of being a member. And I think that's all, Hong. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I welcome any questions. You can uh, email me at norhayati at utm.my or you can find me on LinkedIn and we can uh, keep in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Yati. It's amazing, very inspiring. And there are a lot of also shared good memories with me as well. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Yang, your turn, please. Thank you so much, Hong Yati. That was indeed wonderful. I am now going to share my screen and talk to you about my experience in the IWA. Um, I'd like to say that this is really a story of my journey. But also what I really want to talk about this afternoon with all of you is my love story with IWA. And it is a continuing experience of really falling in love with the association as well as the members that make up this wonderful network of people. But why diversity? Why is diversity so important? And why is the diversity that you find in IWA such an important part of the experience of membership? Number one, as we all know, collaboration and knowledge sharing in this very connected world have no boundaries. And we can see that already in, uh, I suppose, in the, in the COVID era, um, that we do a lot of things virtually and that will seem to persist um, in the future. But also, diversity is more than just people coming from different countries or from different races and ethnicities. Diversity is also about having a multiplicity of disciplines, because that's the only way we can attempt to solve complex problems. You know, these wicked problems that we are now facing, they will only get more complicated in the future. And for us to have a shot at really attempting to solve these problems, we need multiple perspectives and diverse disciplines. But most importantly, on a personal level, I believe that diversity broadens not just our world, the people we meet, the places we go to, but also our mind and makes us more open to learning and experiences. So how can IWA support you in this journey for more diversity in your world, in your life, and in your experiences. I want to share with you five things that I went through in the IWA since the very beginning that I started being active, which was in 2015, not very long ago. And that was when I became part of this consultation group called the Early Career YWP's Engagement Group. This helped IWA boost its membership offerings for young water professionals with less than five year experience. And I worked with a number of other early career YWPs from all over the world to come up with a report. And I'm happy to say that the key recommendations that we came up with in this report were adopted in IWA's social media platform, which we now know as IWA Connect. So this is a very good example of how our ideas, you know, as young people, we have all of these crazy ideas, but IWA gave us an opportunity to see that idea come to life. So what I want you to take away from this is that in IWA, you are never too young or never too old for that matter to make an impactful and lasting contribution. Now, I want to talk to you about my experience of leading a team of YWP rapporteurs. Rapporteurs are basically the conference reporters. They would be the ones going from session to session, taking notes, what are the key messages, key insights from this session, and then reporting it back through a conference report. I led a team of those YWP rapporteurs for certain themes at the Buenos Aires Congress, as well as the recent, well, not very recent, but the latest World Water Congress in Tokyo. And the top picture that you can see here was when my co-leaders and myself went up to the stage in the closing plenary to deliver the final key messages of the key themes of the World Water Congress. It was an exhilarating experience indeed. 
But I have to echo what Yati said here. The people that you meet throughout these experiences, the people that you work with in these rapporteur teams, the people that you listen to in the conferences, they will become your lifelong friends and indeed your contacts for life. And I think that working in diverse teams, the way that I have through these rapporteur teams, really brings out the best in all of us. Aside from being a rapporteur, I also go conference commando every so often by holding workshops, chairing sessions, or co-chairing them and facilitating these sessions in these conferences. I had the pleasure of leading an innovation workshop in the International YWP Conference in Cape Town, as well as co-organizing the Emerging Water Leaders Forum in Buenos Aires. And very recently, with the World Water Congress that we have done online, I was uh, fortunate to become a chair for one of the sessions. And for me, what's so important about working together with a diverse group of people in facilitating these sessions and workshops is that you have to be humble enough to accept criticism, accept a diversity of ideas. And sometimes that is important for opening up our perspectives about how to do things. Um, for example, in the picture that you see here, this was the Cape Town Innovation Workshop that I led. I may have been the leader and main author of the workshop and main facilitator, but I listened to my teammates how best to deliver the workshop, how best our participants can digest. And so the diversity that you find in IWA and working together with other people breeds that kind of humility to accept inputs from others. But it's not just workshops and sessions that I have had the privilege and honor of organizing. I have also organized entire conferences. This began in 2017 by being part of the marketing and PR committee of the International YWP Conference in South Africa. And if, uh, in a couple of years later, I was appointed as the youngest conference president of the Efficient Urban Water Management Specialist Group Conference Series, which we held here in Manila, Philippines. Now, um, our uh, my seniors at the specialist group um, said during the closing uh, program that the Manila conference was in the top two top three of the 20 year history of the efficient conference series, which was a huge team effort, not the, not just from me as conference president, for, but from everyone else, basically, um, who supported in these conferences. Now, organizing a conference is a very, very diff different and difficult animal to manage altogether. Lots of calls, lots of emails, lots of things to put together. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without the diverse team that I had supporting me behind the scenes. The lesson here is that diversity, for diversity to work for everyone, it demands that you as an individual must step up. When I was invited and appointed to be the conference president for Efficient, I could have said no and said, I don't know about that. I'm not confident about my skills. I'm not sure I'm the right guy for the job. But they challenged me, my seniors in IWA challenged me and said, we will support you and we will not let you fail. And that became true indeed. It's still one of the best experiences I had because of IWA. And finally, as you may have heard, it's very important that you also become part of specialist groups because this is where we exchange ideas, collaborate. And if you have the opportunity, maybe in a couple of years time, do raise your hand to become a part of the management committee of these specialist groups. Now, the intermittent water supplier IWS specialist group is one of the youngest um, groups in, in the IWA family. And um, one of the senior professionals, the former um, chair of the uh, specialist group, um, Bambos, um, actually reached out to me and said, would you like to be part of the management committee? Again, I could have said no, because it's not my specialization. I have worked on a few projects on IWS, but it's not my core competency. And yet, I did not want to betray that trust that he was offering to me. And um, the precise uh, reason for their invitation was because they wanted to reach out to the young water professionals, of which I am a part. So I gladly accepted that invitation and applied to become a management committee member. And I have not regretted that decision ever since. 
And so what I encourage you to do is to immerse yourself in the wealth of diversity in IWA. Even if the specialist group is not your cup of tea, go ahead and join it because you will learn something new. I have joined over 30 of these specialist groups. I receive emails from all of them. I read the newsletters and they're fun to learn from. So now I want you to leave with three points on how you can start on your journey and make the most of your time with IWA, as well as um, to start writing basically your love story with IWA. Number one is to be open to opportunities. A lot of the opportunities that came um, throughout my journey in IWA were offered to me, and I could have said no but I accepted the responsibilities and there were always people behind me supporting me throughout the way. IWEA will not offer you these responsibilities if it did not see something in you and if it did not trust in your abilities to deliver. Second is always be curious. And I mean, always, again, going back to even if something is not your area of specialization, go ahead and join that session. Go ahead and join that specialist group. IWA is here for your learning. And finally, don't forget to bring it all home because that ultimately is the reason why we joined this association. We want to be relevant for our country and our communities. And that was the main motivation for setting up the Philippine Young Water Professionals as an official country chapter of the Young Water Professionals group. In closing, I would like to welcome you to the family and your love story with the IWA begins today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yang. Very inspiring. And uh, thanks again, Yati and Yang. I hope everybody who is relatively new to IWA learned a lot and also inspired with what have presented uh, by Yang and Yati. Um, I would like to suggest if you are all able to open your videos and then don't be shy to talk just share your, your experiences, asking questions, uh, challenge us, and then <laughs> uh, share your suggestions, anything. Yeah, for all the uh, participants, please, if you are okay to share videos and talk, feel free. Yes. Ashwani. Yeah, hi. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much for the, both the speaker. It was very interesting for us. And I would like to just uh, have one suggestion and that I've already discussed with the IW Indian chapter team as well. And they are agree with me. So could it be possible to have an asbestos group, especially for water quality and health? Because I cannot see any group especially related to water quality and health. There is a number of group in different sector in water, but uh, if you like you Hong mentioned that uh, ACA is suffering more water crisis. And the most of the, like in, in India, if you see, we are suffering not only for uh, water depletion, also suffering for the contamination, different kind of contamination like arsenic, fluoride, nitrate, chromium, you know, magnesium, and different area have different kind of contamination. So uh, it's my just humble suggestion. It could be possible to have one especially group that is especially for water quality and health. Thank you. Uh, can I ask um, yeah. Daniela or Samyala or Rashna to say a few words about it? But be before that, actually there are quite several specialist groups touching the topic, but it's not like a specific, a bigger scope of water quality and health because there are quite several, for example, health related water microbial ecology. That's really very, and, and then the, the um, metals and related substances mm. in drinking water. And there are a lot of uh, specialist groups linking to that. It's a bigger uh, area which, which covers several specialist groups. But uh, I let uh, Samyala and uh, Rashna, they are directly responsible for specialist groups. 
Yeah, um, Hong, I just wanted to say exactly what you say. There are uh, um, several groups, um, working groups uh, and specialist groups that are uh, um, addressing this topic. So my first uh, um, suggestion will be to um, uh, go around IWA Connect and see when you can find some connection to this topic. And uh, maybe we could plan um, a webinar on the topic. We could do uh, many um, opportunities. There are many opportunities to um, address this topic, but I would suggest um, you can just check the groups that are uh, already talking about this because water quality and health, it's a very big um, and general um, topic. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But, uh, we have like, a, like in my uh, expertise, I cannot find a very specific uh, group for in, according to my expertise. Okay. So something like we have like a one group or hydrogeochemistry, or something like that, or mining impact or anthropogenic pollution or something like that, where the people working, because, you know, be, be a in a specific group is good to be have a discussion and other things. Sure. All right. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Ashmani. Super. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank other you so questions? Much. Yes. Uh, Walter, I saw you raise the hand. It disappeared again. Hello. Walter. Hello, Hi. yeah. Good afternoon, <laughs> everyone. I just like, uh, first of all, I just like to echo what Ashwani, Ashwani said on, uh, 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 on uh, sharing thanks to all of the speakers. So we learned a lot. Uh, got, uh, personally, it got me excited. Um, I, I'd like to anchor on uh, one uh, phrase that Yang uh, shared, uh, the last uh, phrase of bring it all home. And uh, so my question would be, if I would uh, want to see case studies where, oh, by the way, I, I'm a, corp a new corporate member, so uh, basically working in a company. So I'd, I'd like to see, uh, how my knowledge can be uh, helpful to uh, create value uh, to our company, right? So uh, my question is, uh, uh, if I'm interested to see case studies where uh, the knowledge in IWA was able to help uh, create value for certain companies, where would I uh, be, uh, where should I look? Are there anything of that sort? Thank you. Thank you, Walter. It's a very practical question as well. Maybe we start with Daniela, if you want to share a few thoughts on how we engage companies in a way uh, through the existing engagement opportunities and also just to give a few points and other colleagues can give more ideas and maybe Yang also can have some ideas because Yang works in a company in the utility. So I think he can also share some experiences as well. Sure, sure. Uh, just one question, you, you work with an utility, that's it? Waters and wastewater utility? Both are water and wastewater utility. Okay. Yes, that's just, right. Just to check, <laughs> just to check. Well, um, I think you get plenty of uh, opportunities, both as a professional, like an individual professional, uh, because even if you are uh, nominated by a corporate member, uh, you are considered also an individual um, member, right? So I think you have uh, plenty of options, both as a professional by yourself uh, and also as a company representing your company, right? So a couple of examples as representing uh, how you can engage representing your company. We have this um, Climate Smart Utilities Initiative. So uh, in this initiative, we um, uh, started two community of practices, one on mitigation and another one in adaptation. So you can join this community of practices uh, to discuss um, experience that you are uh, passing, uh, or if you are not acting at all, 
in that, let's say, then you can learn and you can uh, understand what other utilities are doing, what the what are the mistakes that they committed, what are their successful um, successful experiences. Uh, the same uh, we have. Um, we are planning to have in the citywide inclusive sanitation program that we are starting now in 2022, in the beginning of 2022. Um, we, the idea is to have utilities engaged to focus uh, the first part of the project. We focus mainly focused mainly in regulators, but now the idea is to have regulators and also utilities joining uh, the um, the program, um, discussing how to implement uh, the concept of citywide inclusive sanitation to ensure sanitation for all, even if, uh, or especially uh, using uh, decentralized solutions, non sewer sanitation. Uh, okay, you can also, um, your utility, for instance, can endorse uh, the citywide, the, the water wise principles. We are now starting a project with uh, um, some utilities in France uh, to understand uh, how utilities that endorsed. Uh, this concept a few years ago, how they're actually applying the concept in their operations, right? Uh, so uh, also we have a lot, uh, many um, specialist groups that uh, work in um, topics that are really related to utilities. For instance, the water losses is one that is really active. Okay, so you also can, can, can join this group. I don't know if Samuela has something else to to share. Oh, we, have, we are also starting um, a utility engagement strategy that is being built in the last year. Okay, so we want to um, increase the number of uh, engagement opportunity for utilities. And one of the um, leading opportunity is to participate in the Utility Leaders Forum in the um, uh, World Water Congress. This forum is uh, aimed at the leaders, the decision makers, uh, because it, we have, uh, we are aware that we have plenty of opportunities for at the professional level for utilities um, uh, employees professionals, but not not as many opportunities in the decision making process. Uh, and I'm I worked in a utility for 18 years before joining Ida Boy uh, as a staff member, uh, and so I know that even if the, the, the professional level is really engaged in something. If we don't uh, convince, let's say, our leaders, our decision makers, uh, we cannot really promote change, right? Uh, so we are also aiming to address this, um, this audience. I don't know if Samala has something else to add, to add. No, I think you cover all. Thank you, Daniela. Okay. Jan, you want to say a few words? Yeah, sure. Um, I actually used to be to work for the company that Wally, uh, that Walter now works for, uh, my NILED. Um, so I know that my NILED has a very long history of involvement in the IWA, including uh, uh, not just participation in conferences, but also in trainings and hosting conferences as well. The largest one, for example, was in 2012, the Water Loss Conference, and then my NILAD was also co-host um, in the 2019 Efficient. So there's many different kinds of benefits. I, I don't think, um, I don't recall either as being part of my NILAD or my previous job, Metro Pacific, that we did a you know a cost benefit analysis of being a corporate member to IWA. But some of the benefits include, number one, if you host um, a conference, there's an obvious monetary benefit because you have to arrange your own sponsorships. That's one layer. Another is PR and marketing. It's really good branding for, for your company. But what I find is the biggest and most important benefit is professional development for staff. Um, and I, I think that's something that HR of the respective company, corporate members should pay attention to how much knowledge are they gaining, are the members gaining from IWA resources, from the source, uh, from uh, other publications and attending conferences. That's a very important benefit. Super, thank you, Jan. Actually, from the regional perspective, because I'm now the regional director for Asian Ocean, Ocean region, so Walter, maybe we can discuss further about how you can engage in the regional activities. 
as the company or as the individual as well. And just to mention that in next World Water Congress, we also have a utility leaders forum, which if your company is interested, you can contact Daniela and about the details. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, any other comments, suggestions? Sharing. I have a follow up uh, question. Yes, please. Yeah. And, and uh, first of all, thank you very much for a lot of uh, tips on where to engage. Uh, I, I would like to follow up uh, on the question of uh, success stories. If there are already success stories for companies uh, gaining value, increasing revenue, perhaps, or uh, uh, reducing OPEX, perhaps. Uh, coming from uh, engagement or interaction within IWA. And uh, if there are case stories, uh, case studies like that or success stories like that, uh, where would it be uh, populated and so that I can just uh, check and look? I, I have thought about the, the Source magazine because this year, I, from this year, I want to actually encourage the, the Asian uh, leading companies to share your success stories in the source magazine as well. This is one of the examples, of course. And of course, in, during events, you, you definitely see the shared best practice, Sorry. best practice and stories. But if you would like to write a, the source article also, we can review and see if we can publish on the, the source magazine as well. Very much welcome. And but I also have a, actually a newsletter for the Southeast Asia region, which also features some of our new corporate members and uh, uh, regional highlights. So you can, we can discuss further and you can share your thoughts and then we can see where we can uh, feature the Manila water uh, to, to the, our communication channels, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Any other comments, suggestions? We are almost uh, the, the time. So I, I really would like to have the last comments or question to come in. Ashwani, you have a comment? You, you... Can I ask again? Can I ask again? Yes. Because if someone wants to ask, they can ask. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My just suggest uh, my one uh, question regarding the internship or exchange program. Could it possible to have some exchange program? Because I believe in it to have some exchange program between one country or one region to another region, so they can uh, exchange their knowledge, exchange their technology, exchange their concept between each other. So, because I was lucky when I was got Erasmus Mundus exchange program. So I spent like four years in Italy. There I learned a lot and then I got a Marie Curie. So I went in South, South America. So I, I worked there as well in the mining region, especially for groundwater problem. So that, uh, that I would like to have more opportunity like this for the young professional to have this kind of opportunity. If they get opportunity to visit some other countries and work with the IW members like one month or three month programs there they can learn some new software or new technique or or they can share their own knowledge with them so could be could be very good for us that's a very good suggestion in fact before the covid 19 uh, we did discuss about special training in internship program within iwa but that was only the initial dis discussion. We haven't uh, uh, come up with the detailed implementation plan yet, but then with the COVID-19, it stopped. But this is a very good suggestion. I think maybe Daniela, if you want to comment and also maybe bring to your uh, team to discuss, um, uh, think about the possibilities. Yes. Um, thank you for your suggestion. Uh, yes, I think it's a very interesting way to um, 
to achieve professional development. Uh, myself, when I was uh, much younger, I participated, I'm from Brazil, and I participated in an exchange program in Japan. I stayed 10 months in Shiga Prefecture in Japan. Um, the Shiga Prefecture is a twin prefecture with my state in Brazil, so they have this program for almost 50 years now, I think. It was a pretty interesting uh, opportunity. So yes, I agree that this is uh, something uh, really interesting. And um, uh, the main point is sponsorship, of course, uh, because this is a cost costly uh, program. Yes. Uh, but yes, we can uh, for sure start to thinking about that and to look for sponsors uh, to start a program focus on exchanging. Uh, the only point uh, that I think it's, um, and from even from my personal experience in my exchange program, is that we have to develop, to build this, to design the program in a very careful way. So the experience is not only for, to be aware of things that we could do if we had money to, uh, but to have experience that are actually feasible to be implemented, right? Uh, because in my particular case, uh, it was such a different reality. This was in back in 20, 2001, yeah, 2001, 2002, that I stayed in Japan. So economic reality, Brazil, Japan was so different uh, that I would say that for my personal um knowledge it was pretty interesting it was a great opportunity but almost nothing that i saw in japan i actually applied uh, when i got back to brazil you know uh, so i think this program must be designed in a way that we ensure uh, the knowledge will be effectively uh, applied right but i think it's really important uh, your suggestion and uh, for sure we can we can consider that in our uh, plans yeah, thank yeah, you. Yes, and if I can just just a little bit, um, just connected to this discussion, a bit more broad comment. It's about uh, the collaboration between the International Water Association and Cranfield um, University. Mm -hmm. There is a, a um, Cranfield University Excellence Scholarship. So Cranfield is providing 15, 15 full free scholarship across the um, Master of Science um, courses um, that you can apply. And the application, I'm checking the website now, are open until the 25th of April, 2022. I'll put the link I'll put the link in the chat, but I think this could be um, of, of, um, of interest, especially for the um, younger members. Wonderful. It's also a joint uh, initiative between IWM and Cranfield, just for you to know. Yeah. yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I hope you find it very, very helpful today. Uh, again, like Yang said, start your journey today and share your love stories with IWA. And I also look forward to all your sharings with us. And please, Feel free to reach out to the staffs, to anybody you are, you feel like I need help or you want to share, and also to reach out to me freely and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.